Hi everybody, Mr. Hayes, Hayes' is World of Math. We're back here, we're gonna wrap up the significance test on the difference of proportions. And this is one of the more interesting, I think, um, lessons that we're gonna do because of the scenario that's going to um, be presented to you. And what's gonna happen here is this, is that we're hiring a new teacher at your school <clears throat> and we end up giving you the following. Okay, we give you this, um, and it says, obviously, because students are main stakeholders, we want you to look at this resume and say, hey, is this somebody we should talk with? Okay, there's 45 different teachers who are applying for this job, so we need to kind of pare that down from 45 into something else. Okay, and so the first one that, and so you usually, there's two of them, um, and we say that they're given up to, you know, half the class will get one set, half the class will get the other. So here's Emily Jones, about me, objective, experience, blah, 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 blah. Then the other half is given this resume. Now, if you didn't notice here, notice it's basically the same resume. Oops, too far. Because it is. The only thing that's named is a change. The only thing that's changed is the name. And so the setup is this. Doesn't matter if somebody has what is traditionally a African-American name, Lakeisha, or if a traditionally white name, Emily. And they pick those names, um, I believe, from the Social Security database. And every year they publish who's the most popular names, et cetera. So anyway, with that being said, here's the setup for what we are going to be doing. So the resume was a fake, obviously, because they're the same. And so what we're, what we're going to end up doing is going to say how many people would say, yes, we would call them back. Here's the setup. So we're going to assume, as I haven't done this before, we're going to use the Stats Medic data. By the way, notes for this, links to Stats Medic, all that other stuff down in the description. Hit like, subscribe, notifications, leave a comment, talk to your dog, whatever it takes. So um, we are going to assume, using their data, that out of the 15 people who saw Emily's or, uh, resume, 12 of them said, yeah, call her back. So that's an 80% difference. And then out of the people who got Lakeisha, 9 out of 15 did. That's a 60% difference. Now, there is something here called a combined proportion, and that's kind of like, okay, if everything was the same, what would happen? So we've got 21 callbacks out of 30 people, so that turned out to be a 70% rate, and we're gonna come back and use this here later. Now, without performing any other calculations, do you think the difference of callbacks of difference of proportions was significant? So we have 80% for Emily, 60% for Lakeisha. Yeah, 20% is pretty big. I mean, 4 or 5%, eh, it could happen. 20%, yeah, it's a lot bigger. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a significance test. Okay, so here is, is there convincing evidence of the difference of callback rates? Whenever you see that, when you're asked to find convincing evidence, that means that you are trying to find a test, and you're going to have to run a test. So here is the setup. The parameter, true difference of proportions, that's P1 minus P2. In callbacks, that's Emily minus Lakeisha. Do you state which one you're subtracting from the other? Our statistic is over here, 80% minus 60%, which is 20, and we're labeling them as P1 hat and P2 hat. Our hypothesis here, and again, remember, the hypothesis is, the null hypothesis is always nothing's going on. Null, nothing. Remember it that way. We had an interesting discussion in class yesterday talking about why a lot of times people think that we should put as the null hypothesis what's going on. And I think a lot of that has to come back to how you've been treating hypotheses in science classes for years. That's only my gut reaction. I don't have any proof of that because I haven't run a significance test nor an experiment on that. So anyway, so the difference between the two is going to be nothing. In other words, P1 and P2 are the same. And we're going to say there is, a, we're going to say not equal to. And the reason why we're saying not equal to is because depending upon setups, we're just trying to look to see if there's a difference, not that necessarily one is more pronounced than the other. And we're going to do a 5% significance level. Okay, so the plan is this. The name of the procedure is a two-sample z-test for P1 minus P2. And for our conditions, a couple of things here. It was random because we randomly handed the resumes out to all of you in theory in this case since we're doing this remotely but you know what i mean 10 percent rule we don't need that because we're not sampling without replacement so remember that just kind of gets put us away side but you are saying you are doing it oh and by the so way yeah, i had causation up here because that's why we do the random one and then the bottom one large counts is to see if we can treat this as a normal distribution um large counts when you do large counts we're going to use that p combined number so that's 70 percent that we got up here because that's again if everything was equal we would be expecting that to be the case um large counts works for the 70 percent for not for the 30 percent 
Okay, and again, if we have 30%, we only get four and a half out of both groups. And so that's something that A tells you we should have a bigger group, but the other thing that it tells you is that this condition is not met, and so we say proceed with caution on this. So what we're gonna do is that that basically says whatever result that we get, we may need to look at doing again. We can't actually use it as super significant. Now, the rest of the test is gonna go out like this. We're gonna use the mean, because we're doing a z-test, the mean, remember, it's always your um, statistic minus the mean. We're gonna use a zero, so that's our null hypothesis. That's the average proportion difference. Our standard deviation here is going to be a regular one, but now notice here we're using the combined p hat. So 70 and 30 divided by 15, 70 and 30 divided by 15. These are important because again, they could be different sizes. Think like what the Mythbusters did in yesterday's example. And then when we do that, our standard deviation turns out to be 0.167. So we have our picture over here. Note, and the thing is significant about that 0.167, we have a 17% standard deviation. So notice that is going to push us almost to the 20% that we're looking for. So again, as I've said to students before, you may want to keep, this, that's one of the benefits of doing it like this is that sometimes you can kind of get an idea of where things are going before they actually get there. We have our test statistic. Specific formula is there. So again, we're doing difference of what we're seeing in the sample minus what we're expecting, which is zero over a standard deviation. And so our work turns out to be here. So we get 20% divided by one point, or the 16.7%, and we get 1.2. And again, the benefit of using standardized scores like this is that you kind of start to get a sense of where things are going. If you're at two, you know for sure you're under 5%. If you're at one, you know it's gonna be iffy. So you can kind of start to play around with ideas. Now this Z-score of 1.2%, and when we end up using either normal CDF or table A is going to get us a number around 0.1151. So the proportion is that, and we need to double it because again, remember we're doing two tail, we're saying not equal to. However, you should already know where things are going because again, this has to be bigger than five and twice 10 is definitely bigger than five. So our p-value is point, has a proportion of 0 0.2302. So the conclusion, two parts, you have to interpret what this means and then you have to come up with a conclusion from that and draw, um, yeah, talk, talk about what's going on in context. Okay, so assuming the null hypothesis is true, that the difference of proportions is equal to zero, there is a 20 or 0.2302 probability of getting a difference of sample proportions of 0 0.20 or greater purely by chance. So what we're seeing happens at le almost a quarter of the time. Because of that, because 0 0.2302 is bigger than 5%, which is our alpha value, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, and we do not have convincing evidence of a difference in callback rates based on name. All right. Now, again, let me be clear here, because this is the part where it starts getting a little dicey. We're not saying the null hypothesis is true. We're not saying there is no difference between calling, um, doing a callback on Lakeisha versus doing a callback on Emily. What we are saying is that we don't have evidence to say otherwise. Okay. It's kind of like saying you're guilty beyond a reason of a doubt. Do we have enough evidence to say that they're guilty? No. So we're going to have to say, well, that's why you're not found innocent. You're found not guilty in a court of law. So anyway, now let's talk about the original study here. Okay. The original study, the researchers sent resumes to commonly white or common, with commonly white or black names randomly assigned to firms in both Boston and Chicago. Here are the numbers of what they sent out. So the white names got callbacks 246 out of 2445, 164 out of 2445. Now I say that because again, we're asking, is this is more convincing evidence what we got? And I ended up commenting on this in the video went sideways, so hence my notes. These are much bigger than 15. So that's going to affect what? Standard deviation. So that's gonna make our standard deviation even lower than possible, lower than before. Now, the other thing that, that does this is the following. We got a uh, proportion of white uh, people with predominantly white names getting callbacks is 10%. Coming back, uh, black, predominantly black names were 6.7%. And so there's a difference of 3.4%. So it's much less than what we saw in the class. However, because of the size of the study, notice our p-value, if you go through and do all of the work, is going to come out to be 0 0.00002. 
And that's just statistically significant. Now, the question is, practically speaking, what happens? Well, that's important because of the following. You're looking at these, the callback rate is really, really low. Okay. What ended up happening? I mean, only 10% of the, I mean, what is it? That's going to be about, if you even go halfway in between, about seven and a half, eight percent of people got callbacks. So you're not getting a lot of callbacks regardless of what you're sending back. And so when you compare 6.7 to 10.1%, how much more than 6.7 is 10.1? Well, if you find the difference, that's an increase of 3.4%. You divide that here, that's a 50% increase. So at least from what they're seeing here, names do have a play into whether or not people are getting callbacks on stuff. Now, this is something that you can probably take a look at within the business that you're working at. You could do something like this. You could do something like we just did, where we hand out resumes with different names, try to get a feel back, and see if there is any bias within your organization. Because if there's not, then you can worry about other things. If there is, then you might need to talk about it or have it brought up. Okay. So again, a very practical thing that you might be able to use in the future. Anyway, um, I'm going to pause it there. We'll pick it up in part two formalize everything else out. We'll talk to you soon.